What's up guys, Quezzy here, bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make these character banners in Photoshop. Uh, so I have two examples here. One is uh, like a Call of Duty character, and one is Katy Perry. Um, so you can use this with whatever celebrity or game character or TV show character or whatever character you want. Um, it works universally, but um, essentially you, uh, in the style I'm going to be showing you, uh, it's like a two color system with like a white background um, and you can mix things in there too um, do whatever you want uh, also uh, the brushes I'm gonna be using in this tutorial are my own ones from my store so if you want to follow along precisely you're gonna need to buy those uh, but if you don't feel like spending the few bucks on them uh, you can download other brush packs and use one similar or sort of do your own thing or you could probably create these in Photoshop by yourself uh, probably wouldn't take more than 10 minutes. Uh, and I, I believe I am going to be referencing my uh, Insane pack, which is my new exclusive pack for banners and things like that. Uh, but I only use it for one flare, so you really don't need to buy it for this. But let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this. And essentially you just need two things for your character so you want obviously your character that you're gonna use or celebrity whatever and then you want a background image that kind of relates to them so I'm gonna be creating this Call of Duty one and I'm gonna put in my background first which is just a simple Call of Duty map and I actually haven't played any Call of Duty in, like recently probably the last two years but uh, I found this on a YouTube video I believe and just screenshotted it so you can do that, screenshot something from a video or something like that. Uh, I'm going to right click and rasterize this layer and then go command U on that. Press command U and uh, bring down the saturation to negative 100. Click OK. And make the opacity like about 40, probably 35 I think. There we go. Uh, somewhere around there will do. I'm actually going to bring the layer slightly lower so I can see this palm tree to the left. Alright, there we go. Uh, one other thing, I'm using just a simple color correction here. That's just curves, uh, some contrast, a simple gradient map, and some levels. Um, and really there's not a huge difference in this. Um, so you can use one of your own CCs or just make one real quick. There's nothing real complicated to this and I, I don't really think I need to show you guys that. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so the character I'm using is obviously this Call of Duty character, and it's already ha it already has a transparent background. So if you're using an image that doesn't have a transparent background, you're probably going to need to use the pen tool to cut them out. But for time reasons, I didn't want to use uh, a character that I needed to cut out. Uh, and I didn't really feel like do spending all that time for this tutorial since it's just educational. Uh, but I'm using this image from Sandra on, uh, her name's uh, Brownie uh, uh, on DeviantArt, so if you want to check her out. But uh, I'm just using this for educational purposes, so I'm going to delete her watermark there. Um, if you guys are unsure how to use the pen tool to crop out images that you want to use, there's a lot of videos. Probably my last few Photoshop tutorials actually have it in there, so if you want more help with that, you can check that out. But I'm sure... Most of you have a general idea of how to do that. Alright, so you want to set up your character however you want. Um, obviously mine's sized pretty pretty perfectly already, this is how I want it. But if you want to change the size, you can Command T and transform it to a different size. But I'm going to leave mine as is. And I'm going to have the main character slightly to the left because this gun sticks out into the middle. And that's like a perfect place to add text as you can see above. So I'm just going to keep them here. Okay. I'm going to drag him down in the group there. Um, I'm going to name his layer main. Alright, so I'm going to name this layer main and then duplicate it. And I'm going to drag that main one below, the main copy below. Uh, and I'm going to call this one pink. Duplicate it. Call that one blue. Or you can name them whatever colors you want to use. So I'm going to select the pink one and just move it to the left a little bit then I'm gonna go command U, bring down the lightness I'm actually gonna do that on the blue one a while and I'm gonna move the blue one to the right something like that so it's like a black 
almost a border, but not quite. Just kind of offsetting blacks on either side of the character. Then uh, I'm going to go to the pink, double click on it. You go to color, color overlay, and I'm going to select a pink. So I'm actually going to make this one a little lighter. Somewhere around there. Okay. Click OK. Going to right click, rasterize layer style, double click on the blue one, color overlay, and I'm going to select uh, this blue, make it a little lighter. Click OK, click OK, right click, rasterize layer style. So now we have a blue and a pink one on either side. I'm going to go select the pink layer and create a new layer. And this is when my brushes come into play. You can also mix up, mix this up, or like uh, mix it up and use other brushes and create different effects. Uh, but this is just how I do it with my own brushes because it's what I use. Uh, I'm going to select this brush right here. I think it's called Rain. Yeah, it's called Rain. Um, I'm going to decrease the size of it a little bit, uh, probably a little more. I'm using the brackets, by the way, to make it smaller. Actually, what size is that? Eh, it's about good. I'm going to do boom. Oops. Probably have the color selected. I'm going to go boom, 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 boom. All right. Now I'm going to go to another brush I have, which is actually pretty simple. It's a diamond formation of circles or a tilted square or whatever. Um, and again, I'm going to make them about the same size so it fits in like that and just click it next to the rain brush just so they kind of look like one brush combined and just it's, a, it's like a neat effect I don't know I like it and it's really simple to do it gives you pretty cool results um, at least I think so uh, of course like I keep saying you can do other things if you want if you don't have these brushes uh, one thing you can do for sure though is um, this next effect. So uh, I'm going to select the screenshot we have as our background. I'm going to go down here to where the rectangle tool uh, is by default. But I'm going to go down to custom shape tool. Um, and I'm going to go and uh, if you don't have all these shapes, I believe you go here to the gear, click down and go to all. Um, so you want to have that selected, I believe so. Um, and then you want to go to the shape that's next to the crosshair and like next to the TM, the R, for like the restricted and the copyright. And you want to select that. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Make sure I have that pink selected. I'm going to click in the middle of our character. I'm going to click, hold shift, hold alt, and span this out about right there. I'm going to right click and rasterize the layer. Then I'm going to go to my eraser tool. And I'm just going to erase the right side of this. And there we go. That's about it. Uh, maybe decrease the opacity a little bit. It's about something like that. But that fills our left side uh, of the picture. And I don't know. I think it just complements the character uh, like real nice. I, I think it looks good. Uh, but now we're going to do the right side. Um, so we're going to be working with blue. So I'm going to change my uh, the black color to this blue color click OK and I'm gonna go to the blue layer and create a new layer I'm gonna go to the brush and I'm gonna select this triangular uh, esque brush it's called sample brush 16 I'm gonna click it I'm not gonna change the size of it and I'm gonna click right in the middle of it and that's kind of like the middle shape uh, and that's all I really do with that one. Uh, but then I'm going to also go to the brushes, uh, get that same square with the circles in it, decrease the size a little bit. Um, about there, I'm going to have a small one about there, go a little bigger, about there. And I'm going to go back to my brushes, get uh, this like triangular shape with uh, squares called O. For some reason, I don't know why I named it that. Um, and I'm going to decrease the size of this again. Go boom. Boom. All right. And of course, you can use different brushes if you choose or use mine, whatever floats your goat. 
Um, I'm gonna go down here again where the custom shape tool is, but this time get the rectangle tool. And I'm staying on that blue. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna create a text box uh, below the gun. Now, depending on your character, the positioning of this might differ. So you just wanna put it somewhere that's in the middle of the page or close to the middle or wherever you want, really. It doesn't actually have to be the middle. But a place you see fit that kind of connects with this right border. So I'm going to put it down here for now. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate it with Command J. And I'm going to right click, rasterize that layer. I'm going to bring it over here. Command T. Size it down. Hit enter. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Command T again. I'm going to hold Command, click the top left, hold Shift so it stays straight, and line it up with this brush here, and click Enter. So this is where we're going to put our social media. I'm going to put it right there. Command J to duplicate it, and you'd put as many here as, as like to match each social media you have, or you're going to include. Um, I'm going to uh, Command T and just drag this in to, so it's all flush with each other but I'm just gonna do two um, since I don't really need too much and now we're gonna go ahead and work on the character so if you notice a few things in this character uh, I changed the color of like the bottom part of the gun to pink the back part to blue the scopes to pink and blue and I'm not gonna do all these I'm just gonna show you how to do this if you want to do it to your character if they have like glasses you want to change the color to or whatever you want uh, there's a few ways you can do it um, I'm just going to show you how, like, the, the two best ways, I think, in my opinion. So I'm just going to change the color of this, uh, the scope. Or actually, I'll do the bottom part of this gun, because the scope's a little too easy. So I'm going to use the pen tool. Select the pen tool, and I'm just going to click around this button, or this part of the gun, because it is, like, a slightly different color. It's, like, a rusty kind of orange. Um, and I'm going to click around that. And I'm just going to do it sloppily, so say this is it. Um, of course, if I was doing this for real for an actual client, I'd want it to be really good. Or if I was doing it for myself, I want it to be really good. But this is just for educational purposes. So I have a new layer created. And I think that's a new layer. Did I create that new layer? This isn't anything, right? Yeah. So I have a new layer created. I'm going to right click, fill path. I want to make sure I have my one of my colors selected. So I'm going to go here to color, and I'm going to select, uh, in this case, the blue. Um, actually, we'll do the pink. I think the pink might look cool. I'm going to click OK, click OK. And I'm going to right click. Actually, I'm going to right click and delete path. I'm going to drag that layer above the main layer, because right now we can't see it. Um, and if this is something that's already colored, so like I said, it's like a rusty red. Um, I'm going to change the layer to hue, then command J to duplicate it, and set it to overlay. And it should uh, be that color. Now, this one up here is a lot brighter because I used, a, I believe, a brighter pink. This is more of a duller pink. Um, so you might want to use a brighter pink. If I go command U and bump up the saturation on both of these, it should improve slightly and actually didn't uh, it's, it's more of a red actually now so that's probably why it's duller uh, the red's not as vibrant um, but yeah that's how you that's essentially how you do it I believe it works on grays still yeah so as you can see wherever I move it it shows up and replaces that color um, so yeah that's essentially how you do it um, you could also if I delete this one if I just put it on normal you could do something like that and maybe just decrease the opacity a little bit like that. Either way works. Um, I like the first way I showed you because a lot of times it's more vibrant and looks better in my opinion. Um, and another thing you can do with that layer is double click on it, go to inner glow, set it to overlay, bring up the opacity, bring up the size, maybe not that much. But it creates a slight, uh, click OK, a slight like glow around everything, which can look cool in on certain things. So that's just something to keep in mind. 
All right, now um, we're going to go to the text because I'm not going to continue to do more to this character because you guys can do that on your own. You guys understand that concept. Um, so I'm going to go to text tool. I'm going to go back to black and white here and make sure I have white selected. I'm going to be on right align and I'm going to click down here for some text. So I'm just going to put your name. And <clears throat> the font I'm going to be using is Panton. And I'll be using Panton black caps. And I'm going to command T to resize this accordingly. About, eh, that's about good. That looks good. Um, one thing is, depending on how everything looks, you might want to add layer styles, you might not. Um, you can see up here I added layer styles. Here, uh, I think it might actually look better without the layer styles. But if you think it will look better with layer styles, um, all you really want to do is add simple ones. So a gradient overlay. Um, I go, I have it on normal, black to white, 26%-ish. So it's like a slight gray to white. And then uh, again, I'll do inner glow and probably decrease the pixel size of that. Okay, so about four seventy-five percent overlay, and then just add a drop shadow, which I have on multiply eight percent, ten distance, ten spread, eight size. So that's just really nice and simple. Um, I'm actually going to decrease the opacity of the gradient just a little bit, like that, so it's not too much gray and it's still pretty white. Um, so there we go. Click OK, uh, and then we're going to use the social media here. So. Um, of course, you can drag logos in. I'm not going to spend the time to go drag a logo in because um, it's just going to slow down this tutorial. That's already going to be pretty long. So you, you could put your social media like at Huezi. Uh, speaking of which, you guys should follow me. And I'm just going to size this down. So you can imagine the Twitter logo next to it. And you just have something like that. And then the same thing with whatever social media you have down here. And of course, if uh, the name like goes off this blue bar, you can extend the blue bar, but you want it to be in some kind of order. You don't want like the top one to be short, middle one long, and then the bottom one be the shortest. You want to have like short, a little longer, and the longest. Like you want to have some kind of order to it. Um, or else it's just gonna kind of look silly. Uh, but there you go. Um, final steps here, I'm going to have the color correction turned on. Um, so you can see all this, all my color correction did is really dark it, darken it. So it's really not anything of a color correction essentially. Uh, but I'm going to create a new layer that's above everything else. Go to my brush and I'm just going to get a soft brush here. Jack up the size a little bit. I'm going to make sure I'm on white. Get off caps lock. Bump up the size a little bit and Put that like right there and then i'm gonna go find my pack and i'm gonna go ahead and add a flare of some sort um, again you don't have to buy my pack you can use any flare you want so i'm gonna uncheck that um, and that's what this flare will do And voila, there we go. And now to finish it off, we're gonna close that group. Or if you don't have anything in a group, you wanna select it all and then press Command G on your keyboard. And we're gonna name this banner and then Command J to duplicate it and then Command E to merge it all. And then I'm gonna Command J to duplicate that. Go to filter, distort, wave. And this is how we're gonna get this like ripple effect. I'm going to go to wavelength, increase the max to about like the whole way, really. Um, number of generators, maybe knock that down one or actually maybe, yeah, we'll keep it at five. And we'll knock down the min a little bit to about seven. Uh, we'll click OK. We'll see how this looks. Uh, that distorted a little too much. So let me go and change something up a little bit. So let me drop the amplitude down to two, actually about 17. That shouldn't do too much. There we go. 
Um, so let me go back to those settings so you can see them uh, better. So generators five, wavelength 10 to 99 or 999, amplitude 117, and there you go. Uh, you can pause it there if you want to look at that. Uh, did I just do that again? Um, <clears throat> there we go. And I'm going to select both of these, Command E. Um, the only reason I duplicate that is just in case I screw up or something. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate it again, Command J, uh, again, in case I mess up or something. Go to Sharpen, Sharpen More, and that should make the image look real nice and finish off the background, essentially. So yeah, guys, that's a, the final uh, bit of this, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you learned something. I hope you guys uh, start making these banners now. Um, one thing that I didn't show you, actually, I added some more brushes around the blue part, which is just an extension of these brushes I added to the right, so you can add that in if you feel so inclined. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, be sure to drop a like uh, if you enjoyed. If this gets 100 likes, I will put the PSD in the description. So if you guys want that, be sure to like the video. And thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.